your Massachusetts land sales guide. Let me take you through the process for selling undeveloped land in Mass, or perhaps this should also track for a teardown type property to be sold for development. On top of the step-by-step -step here, I wanna give you tips for maximizing your returns as well. That's critical. I'm Craig Power with Power Realty Advisors, licensed here in Massachusetts. And when it comes to getting the best returns for your land, it can be very specific. You might have a piece of land that for whatever reason, maybe it's worth much more to in a butter or specific buyer. We'll get into all of that. Uh, and I have to say, and, and I'll save this for the end, but if, if you are selling land anywhere in the state of Massachusetts, you probably want help from a real estate agent. You'll likely want a personalized version of all this. So get in touch. My contact info is always listed somewhere on our videos. Um, like I said, get, get in touch anytime here to help. The first part of selling land is the part I call information gathering. It is critical. The more legwork we do here, as long as we all have proper expectations, the better everything else is gonna be. As a real estate agent, I go on a fact-finding mission. So, so what are we gathering? Not just size and the location of the land, not just tax records. We need to know zoning regulations, environmental restrictions, any wetlands, conservation restrictions. Where are the boundaries, right? Should you consider getting a land survey? We need to know about any recorded easements, uh, encumbrances. An, an easement is a recorded right of way across another property. So uh, not to get too far into the weeds. So I once had an owner selling a piece of land well located, but it actually had two easements on it from two abutters. Both had a permanent right of way across it. So you really couldn't develop it. And those abutters actually had the inside track to buying it themselves. They had it held hostage uh, if they wouldn't deal. No one else would wanna buy it. So it was inherently worth more to the abutters that's one of those very specific situations. Like I said, getting a little into the weeds there, but I wanted to, to mention it. So as part of the information gathering, you're looking at your land from a development perspective. What are the development opportunities, the highest and best uh, you know, attainable use cases for this property? There's sometimes a larger conversation here about by right development versus by special permit. So development by right, is usually permitted for projects that fit existing zoning. That includes not just land use, but setbacks from property boundaries. Maybe you need to be 50 feet off the boundary, height limits. Development by special permit is different. It requires additional approval beyond what is allowed by right. Usually there's a public review, there are approvals to go through from zoning and planning boards. Now I'll pause to say, if you think your land, the best use case and best return for you is by special permit, I again want to hear from you because I have someone, if you're in the state of Mass, I have someone you should speak to who specializes in this zoning analysis type work. Uh, it is a specialty. So you can send me an email and, and get the ball rolling in, in that, the right direction there. Um, okay, so we've done the information gathering. Whether or not we're even putting together a formal listing like on the MLS is actually yet to be determined. I'm not there yet but we know what we're marketing. We also have a good sense of who we're marketing to, hopefully. Um, however, we need to talk about pricing, all important. Running parallel to the information gathering is market research. Your real estate agent will conduct market research, look at the comps, other sales that could inform the value of what you're selling. They're gonna dig in here. Oh, and it's not just as simple especially in land sales, as just looking at a few comps. Importantly, we have to look at uh, market conditions, right? Current market conditions, we have to advise you on that. So today, our biggest obstacle in any type of development deal, and I can tell you I'm nurturing a pair of bigger, slow-moving ones right now that aren't closing anytime too soon. <laughs> um, right now, the biggest obstacle is construction costs. The cost to build really hurts, and interest rates too of course, right? Same, same thing. Those are sort of intertwined. And it directly hurts the price of your land, right? When construction is cheaper, when it's cheaper to borrow money, the buyers are usually willing and able to pay you more for your land. It's a tough market right now, right this second. Um, anywho, taking all these things into account, the comps, the market conditions, the use cases, the target audience, we are establishing an opinion of value, an opinion of value. Your actual pricing strategy may vary whether you're going to advertise it for more or less or exactly as much as you 
and your agent believe it to be worth. That leads us into the next step, which is marketing strategy. Your marketing strategy. Really, this goes one of two ways. Uh, are you going to advertise it for a private sale or on the open market? And again, we're talking about not just raw land. You might be thinking for your own purposes, this is a pretty clear cut. We have to do it one way or the other. Uh, I'm covering a wide range here. So let's talk about marketing strategy and the reasons for listing it on the open market versus doing a private sale. Uh, if you've watched any of my past videos about housing, real estate sales, I always come down on the side of open market, high visibility, high availability, just as many clicks and eyeballs as possible. This is different, right? Especially when you're selling a development opportunity. This is where there is a lot of logic or there can be a lot of logic in playing it close to the chest. The advantages of a private sale, I mean, the main ones, confidentiality and discretion are usually the reasons for it. So depending on what you're selling, it frankly might even be a development opportunity that your, your neighbors or your neighborhood isn't thrilled about. That's a common reason for a private sale. Um, what else? Um, perhaps you're going after, a, you're trying to go after a niche market. You may have some unique characteristics or land use and you want to tailor the marketing to a certain audience. But I would say the main thing here is you've identified, when you're doing a private sale, you've identified a reason you prefer things to be kept quiet. That's an advantage for you. The advantages of putting it on the open market, which is in the MLS, is what I mentioned before and what I usually default to. More attention, more clicks, more eyeballs, it comes up in search. Zillow, it gets syndicated out with a big marketing push. I think if speed is a concern for you at all, you would probably just want to listen on the open market and do the best possible job from there. Marketing privately is very direct, where marketing openly is just what it sounds like. The showing process, assuming your real estate agent has all the information they've gathered at their fingertips, it's just a matter of walking people around the property or elsewhere and providing information, just doing everything they can to generate interest. Um, now on to the next step, which is handling offers and negotiation. Again, your real estate agent is gonna advise you through this. Having studied the comps and now having seen with their own eyes and ears uh, and studied the reception, the interest of your property in the marketplace, right? They've gotten some feedback from other buyers and other agents. So beyond price, you're looking at two main things here from the buyer when you do get an offer. First is contingencies, right? What are they offering in terms of process? And then second is financing. Especially today in this moment, your agent really has to bet their financing. Not just if they're qualified, but what's gonna bite us later. You could be looking at a longer process. Um, one phrase I live by, time kills deals. Time kills deals, remember that. So. You wanna vet any offers in order to ensure success later. Um, once your offer is accepted, if you haven't already, you should be linked up with a real estate attorney. In fact, depending on the way we're approaching this deal, that may have already happened. Next phase is buyer due diligence. So this could be a period of anywhere from zero days to, I don't know, maybe it goes on for, for years in some really big deals. Uh, there's gonna be some variance here, but generally anything I've been a part of, you see it's like a week to, to 30 days, 60 days. You know, I've never actually had anything that, gone, that has gone 60 days. I hear like 30 to 60 days is, is normal. Um, for buyer due diligence, what I'm referring to is title search, survey if needed, zoning analysis if it hadn't been performed previously, permit review, legal review, environmental due diligence, could need a consultant on that depending on the project. And this, this won't be news to you, financials are a huge part of the due diligence period. Sometimes the results of the due diligence period can lead to a renegotiation of price or terms or you know the deal can be per terminated, maybe the, the buyer pulls out. I can tell you one major variable here in Massachusetts with land deals, commonly we'll have a perk test or a percolation test, which is testing the soil's ability to absorb water for the purposes of a septic system. If it fails, that can impact land value, whether or not there's site work to be done or drainage to be added to make something buildable. It's, it's a very case sensitive thing. Um, so at a certain point, moving on to the next step, at a certain point, you are just waiting for buyer financing. Your attorney is overseeing the process and we're all collectively helping to execute on that. Any documentation needed in order to transfer ownership and collect your proceeds. And then 
you finally get to the closing table. This is, this is the easy part for all of us. There are no keys to exchange. It's mostly from my end, just a congratulations on a successful venture. Let's go celebrate. The real estate agent duties I've experienced are mostly on the front end with these deals. Um, Post-sale, we really try to ensure a smooth transition and keep in touch with the buyer. We want them to be successful as well and provide any support. Now let's get into some, I had jotted down a couple frequently asked questions. These may very well, if you've come across this video, these may very well be the reason you're here in the first place. So how long does it typically sell, take to sell undeveloped land? It's a much longer sales cycle than selling a house. Usually it, it could take a month or six months or a year or longer. It's a much more limited pool, depending on the market and your own expectations. It can be frustrating. You know, it is plainly frustrating to me how hard it can be to buy and build anything, um, especially like I said today. So can I sell my property if it has environmental issues? You can as long as you go through either proper disclosure or proper, you know, take proper mitigation measures yourself. Sometimes it's expensive, but especially with environmental anything, you just have to follow the steps and you got to do the right thing. Um, one question here, so this is a big one. I've heard about getting permits and then selling the land with permits. How does that work? Yeah. We're talking about going through the process of getting the special permit, getting the project approved, then selling to another party uh, who's actually going to complete the work. The only thing there is the permitting process can sometimes be expensive or risky. So you wanna have a good sense of the end result before you start sinking tens of thousands of dollars into it. I've said this before in other videos, real estate development, it's speculative and it's it comes with a bunch of upfront costs that the, the bank doesn't pay for. And that's why only people with money can get into real estate development, money in their pocket. Last question that comes up sometimes, can I just develop the property myself? You can, and I, I had a client right now who's um, in the process of kicking that around. The problem is you might be doing this as, as more of a hobbyist, and these can be expensive lessons to learn. Um, you know, certainly I've had some clients that are very capable with this, but it, the cost can be too high. The reason to sell to a developer is they have the experience structuring and managing these deals, and we just, we get you what you can get in the now. There are some creative types of deals that we can structure. It's a whole other tangent um, for property to be developed that may be owned that I, I, again, I gladly cover in a more personalized way. Maybe it's more of like a seller JV, land as collateral type deal. Just contact me uh, and would love to talk through those scenarios as well. Some are more feasible than others. So I hope this was helpful to you. Maybe you have some land you've owned for a long time or you've come into it by circumstance, or maybe you own property in an area where there could be some higher attainable value through development. Um, come in full circle. I have unique exposure to this compared to your average local realtor. My contact info is listed here. Craig Power with Power Realty Advisors, again, licensed in Mass. My main coverage areas are Boston and the South Shore. That's where we have an expertise, certainly. And most other parts of Massachusetts, we are able to execute on this type of business as well. Or worst case, we have specific partners in every county, every corner of the state that we can refer to. I do recognize that there can be very local elements at play. So I don't like to totally overpromise. Um, I can tell you, I've never helped anyone sell land in like Berkshire County in the Western part of the state, but we, we try to be very direct about how we can help. And if we're not the best for you, if I'm not the best for you, we can tell you exactly who is. So please get in touch. You can email me anytime, craig at powerrealtyboston.com. Set up a meeting or a call. And let's talk through the options for you. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. Like and subscribe. More on the way.